Everybody, Aaron Catwin, Sage Dynamics, and this is my review of the Aimpoint Comp M5 Red Dot Sight. When it comes to shooting, Aimpoint's pretty much a household name, especially when we're talking about Red Dot Sights. Uh, they have been the forerunner and the innovator in a lot of the technology that we see today. Uh, in reflex sights, red dot sights, uh, and the Comp M5 is just a continuation on that. Um, going into the review, I didn't expect to have any issues with the Aimpoint because Aimpoint has always been good about building durable, very durable optics. They've been a commonplace, a stalwart in military use, law enforcement use, uh, and the individual shooter would be for competition self-defense or um, uh, just general purpose uh, red dot optics. Um, so coming off of the the very good success of the micro line T1, T2, uh, the Comp M5 is a new offering. Many people asked why the Comp M5 even needed to exist because initial reports, initial press releases, and initial kind of first look about the Comp M5 was that it was just basically a micro that was powered by a different battery source. But there are some other differences that are important to talk about. The initial thing that most people are going to notice that sets the Comp M5 apart from the T1, H1, Micro line is the fact that it's powered by a AAA battery. Why is that a big deal? For most people, it's not going to be a big deal. Uh, for the average shooter or for the shooter who's just uh, not occupationally going to be using this optic, it's more for a competition or home defense or hobby gun, uh, it's not something that you're really going to have to worry about. We think about it from a law enforcement perspective or even more so a milita military perspective, using this optic overseas, the AAA battery is much more common than your 20, 30, to power source. Given Aimpoint's uh, record for battery life on their optics and the Comp M5 being no different, is battery change or, or battery commonality that big of a deal? No, because uh, the Comp M5 is going to have a very comparable battery life to what you're already used to from the micro line. Another difference in the Comp M5 uh, from some of uh, Aimpoint's other optics is the, the aluminum is 7075 as opposed to 6061, so arguably it can give you a more durable optic. Aimpoint has never been known for not being durable, uh, so I wasn't really too concerned with that coming into the review process, but durability was going to be big on my review because, as you can see, the switch and the battery housing is on the top of the optic, which, depending on how, if a rifle is to fall or if a rifle is to take impact, uh, much more likely, again, arguably, to take the impact on the top of the optic than it is on the bottom where it was mounted with, uh, like, the Comp M4. I understand why they put it up top. It's much easier to manipulate uh, my control feature uh, with it mounted up top versus it mounted down here, especially since most sh shooters are going to be right-handed, so putting it up top just made sense. But from a durability standpoint, am I going to be able to have this rifle take a spill, just lean it up against a truck and it falls over, or maybe it takes an even more significant fall, and have it not only retain at zero, but not suffer any damage to the control feature of the battery cap or the battery housing itself? Let's find out. First things first, here is a zero distance group before I began the durability testing. So what you're looking at is a 50 yard group, because that's uh, this would actually say 50 meter group, because that's the distance at which I zeroed this rifle using a 5200, uh, zeroed at 50, and then confirmed at 200. For the purposes of the durability testing, I wanted to make sure it maintained zero after the durability testing. Now, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that I try to keep things realistic, but I also like to accelerate life cycle on optics. Uh, so I wanted to simulate, um, well, actually not even simulate, I was just going to do it. Uh, I wanted to give the optic a number of drops to kind of accelerate what could potentially happen to it uh, in the end user's hands to, for those of you that follow the channel and are going to take my advice at the end of the, the video on the optic, if you wanted to purchase the optic, you could at least buy it with confidence and not have to beat it up yourself if that's something that you would otherwise do. Or if you're just interested to see if it can handle it. Uh, well, I did multiple drops on this optic from shoulder height. I did them in just common range terrain, some Georgia red clay, and I also did a number of drops on concrete as you're seeing here. 
what I found was, well, it took some abrasion, took some bumps and bruises, and I was actually able to bend the control knob, but the optic continued to function. I wasn't too surprised like by that, again, because Aimpoint is known for building durable optics, but of course the question remains, is it going to maintain zero? Let's see. This is a five round group fired at the exact same distance from the exact same rifle from the exact same optic after the drop testing. As you can see, zero has been for all intents and purposes maintained. Now again, and I've said this in pretty much every optic review I've ever done, if your rifle does take a serious spill, it's always a good idea to check your zero before you trust your life to that gun, put it back in the patrol car, go back on duty with it, or store it in the bedroom for your home defense gun, if you have the opportunity. But in the heat of the moment, so to speak, if the rifle were to take a fall, I think that, and again, this is just a sample size of one, but I would say with confidence that if the rifle takes a significant hit, it's an aim point. It's going to be able to maintain its zero. The wheel hasn't necessarily been reinvented with the Comp M5, but there are some things that are a little bit too significantly different from what you would expect from the micro line. Uh, I'm comparing it directly to the micro line. I wouldn't say comparing, but the legacy leading on from the micro line, because it does seem to be an improvement on some of the things that the micro line, not necessarily lack, but areas for improvement. One thing that I noticed initially um, is the glass does appear cleaner um, and it doesn't have the same haloing effect at the edges that I would get on a, uh, on certain dot brightnesses and certain lighting conditions that I've seen on micro, especially the earlier micro models of the aim points. Uh, it does share the same footprint, so you're gonna be able to use your micro mounts on this, your T1, H1, what have you. Um, Tube length, the actual length of the optic has, was an initial concern when the, when the Comp M5 was announced, people were worried that it was gonna have a significant telling effect. I didn't really get that feeling. It's not something that I'd necessarily noticed because the overall length of the Comp M5 is not significantly longer than what you're used to from like a T1 or an H1. The built-in caps are definitely a nice feature. Uh, I appreciate that they're there, even though I'm probably very rarely, if ever, going to close them. It is nice that they're there, just depending on the environment that I'm in. If I'm not readily on the optic, if I'm in snow, sand, wind, um, just a just a, a very, I guess, uh, particle-ridden environment, it's nice to be able to throw those caps closed to protect the optic if that's not something I need to do. Obviously, weather, water concerns um, notwithstanding. During the review process, I put 2,000 rounds uh, underneath this optic on this rifle. Uh, in fact, I mounted it on this rifle, which is the, uh, the ADM UIC um, LAX. I was reviewing this rifle, so I figured I'd kill two birds with one stone, so to speak, and knock out a review of the Compton 5 at the same time. Um, so the burn down uh, for the optic. You know, if you're not familiar with the burn down, it's basically what I do. I want to put 500 rounds through a firearm or firearm accessory as fast as possible. Um, to accelerate the life cycle and to get the gun hot because it's not necessarily the amount of rounds you fire is so much as it can be how quickly those rounds are fired. So 500 rounds fired as fast as possible can identify certain issues due to heat and you're not necessarily going to see if you fire those same 500 rounds over the period of two or three or four months. Because the optic is uh, definitely not anywhere near the barrel uh, compared to the other parts of the actual rifle itself, heat wasn't going to be a huge concern. Uh, and the operating temperatures of the Compton 5 identified by Aimpoint are very, very generous because it is a optic built with very, very hard use in mind. But it did accelerate the life cycle of the optic. Um, again, 2,000 rounds for the life of an optic isn't a great deal of uh, ammunition, uh, all things considered. Um, some of my older Aimpoints on rifles have, you know, tens of thousands of rounds uh, fired underneath them. So. I didn't really expect the burn down to create any issues, but it was done um, and the results were as I expected. I didn't experience any significant issues. Uh, I didn't have any, uh, any of the heat cause any issues with the electronics or the dots start to bloom or anything fade. I didn't get any flickering uh, and the refresh moving from target to target just during the review process overall. Um, and especially during that uh, high intensity or higher schedule of fire in a short period of time um, was nothing but positive. I do spend quite a bit of time, as often as possible, shooting under night vision. Uh, just for personal practice, it's something that I use, uh, and I do teach night vision uh, related classes. Red dot sights are my preferred go-to optic for night vision specific guns. And a reason for that being that um, if I have a concern that my bad guys uh, have night vision of their own, I don't necessarily want to be using an aiming laser. I like the ability, if I have to, to co-witness my optic to my night vision and be able to shoot. And that's something that I wanted to get into with the Comp M5, uh, because in the past, using especially the, the micros, nothing bad against the micro, it's just that they're 
their positioning, their relative body height, and the uh, size of the objective window did make me kind of fish for them a little bit more than I would like if I was going to go to a traditional cheek weld to shoot. With the micro, it was a little more problematic. Now, the overall size of the Comp M5, especially the objective window, isn't significantly due to really any difference at all. Um, so I did experience somewhat of the same problem. It's not a huge deal. You can still, if you have to, say your laser goes down or you're worried about your bad guy having night vision of his own and you don't want to use your, your actual projection laser or you're going for a very, very precise shot and you don't trust your laser zero at that distance or maybe any number of reasons why you might go with a traditional cheek weld while wearing night vision. Uh, the night vision settings on the Comp M5 are awesome. Uh, you're not going to have any issues there uh, in relation to your actual night vision. The dot's not going to bloom needlessly bright like you have with some other optics that don't have night vision brightness settings. Um, and co-witnessing, or I should say, well, I guess co-witnessing would probably be the best word because it's technically what I'm doing, uh, night vision to optic. Um, I was able to use somewhat of a modified cheek weld. I wasn't able to, to place my cheek weld uh, is close to, uh, or I say it wasn't the same cheek weld I would use during the day. It was only slightly different. So not much difference between this and what I experienced on the, uh, the micro. Overall performance of the Comp M5 was excellent throughout the review process. Durability testing, um, increased rate of fire, using it under low light, using it under night vision. Uh, it's got just the right amount of brightness settings. The night vision settings are great. Uh, and I do appreciate that the glass does, to, at least to me, appear much clearer. Uh, not that it was a bad thing on the micro, but it does appear to appear more color neutral than what I was used to with uh, some of the, the T1s that I have. Uh, not again, not a huge deal, but some people um, like to have their glass be color neutral, and I'm one of those people. I like as, as, very, as, as little as possible prismatic effect from lens coating as I can get. And we've come a long way from the earlier generations of red dot optics to get away from it. And I think this is just one more advancement in glass technology that you're seeing on the Comp M5. So if you're looking for, if you're thinking about the Comp M5, it's definitely a great choice. You're not getting any significantly large advantages that you, uh, away from uh, the micro. Um, battery's different, aluminum body housing's different, same footprint so you can use the same mounts. Uh, but I do like the adjustment ability a little bit better. I like the dot settings better. I think it's more simplified. It's easier to adjust. Um, I like what I like where, despite my initial concerns, where they put the uh, the power housing just for an ease of adjustment. Uh, and overall, it's a great little optic. Now, if uh, you don't need one, or if you're thinking, oh, I got to replace my micro, uh, I would say no, you don't. There's nothing wrong with the micro. Uh, but if you are looking to add another red dot optic and your aim point is your preferred brand, you really can't go wrong with the Comp M5. I'm Aaron Cowell with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly. Should I, uh, you, you don't think I'll have to blur that out, do you? Let's see if anybody noticed. Well, yeah, I'm not blurring it out.